Unfortunately, if you're a Chicago Bears fan, you know Dennis Green's famous quote, but it's taken on the opposite meaning for us. The Bears are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Thanks for tuning in to Requiem for a Tuesday. A somber day here, here at my household. Um, this is Adam Pecora. Thank you for tuning in. Rate, review, subscribe. We appreciate all the listeners. Um, get those numbers up. Share it. Do all the things. Check out the links in the description below. We got lots of good stuff for you. There's merch at rfat.bigcartel.com. And, uh, you know, the music, we got lots of stuff. Check out everything. But rate, review, subscribe goes a long way. Um, look, what what more can I say? Um, well, a lot. A lot. But to describe the emotional feeling of... <sighs> It just always has to be the worst version possible for the Bears. We can't just lose a game. Like, it already would have been... We already blew the game in an embarrassing way. Then somehow managed to stay in it, to take a lead, and lose it even worse. They they managed to get your hopes up always before they tear you down. And that's what this game was as a whole and within itself. There was a microcosm of the Chicago Bears in the game. And the game itself was an example of just history repeating itself over and over and over again. And I mean, here's the thing. If we're going to start bright side first, I will say the one positive note is that the negative was not the quarterback. Caleb sucked all game some of it his fault with wildly inaccurate just hyped up throws and a majority of it not his fault with a bad offensive line and which is probably due to bad scheme which is probably why also no one seems seem to be open most of the game and, you know, he's sure going to have his rookie mistakes and have bad games and have bad throws and miss people and all that stuff. And he has played well within the benefit of that doubt every time. I don't question him at all. I was wondering what the fuck was going on most of the game. He manages to turn it on in the fourth quarter, lead us for two Big drives when they have no offense all game. DeAndre Swift bails us out for the first TD. Great blocking for once. Uh, the third round rookie left tackle had to get in. It was ugly for a minute, and then he seemed to kind of settle in and do a little bit better. I don't know if that necessarily is true. He may have sucked the whole time. Um, Tevin Jenkins isn't good and should not be extended. I mean, unless we really can't find anybody even an equal ability to replace him. I just don't see the point. He can't stay on the field, and he has not played up to a high enough level. No one on the line really has. Um, again, is that due to the scheme? Is it due to bad play calling? Is it due to them not knowing what they need to do? Like, I don't know. There's just no way the entire line is that weak. And it's scary how badly we get embarrassed when we get embarrassed. It just doesn't seem to happen to most teams at such a high rate where it's like literally every other time he's dropping back to pass, there's just immediately a blown block and a guy in his face. And it just seems like by now, especially in the season, you should have shit like that figured out. Uh, and, you know, for, for Caleb to lead the team down the field and for them to try to do the Doug Kramer play, which here's the thing, I'd seen this play coming. It's like, obviously, this is going to be a wrinkle of this once you start using Doug Kramer as a fullback. And they went so far as to release the fullback we had on the roster 
Blazing game, who was out with injury and when he got injured was playing poorly, but the whole team, the whole offense was poor at the beginning of the season. Uh, not that that wouldn't be true about the commanders game. It's, it, it's a time and a place like to think that this is when you go with the wrinkle you go with the wrinkle when you've shown goal line already and you're up or even if you just have clear momentum like if your offense is clicking and you've got 28 points on the board and you're up 28 21 maybe you try the fullback run or if you're up like two three touchdowns and the game is over then just say fuck it why not um when you're scraping and clawing and you have one touchdown on a very long run and the offense has been hell all night, you don't go cute and try the wrinkle. It's just like they're playing straight goal line anyway. It, the, the negatives there, like you should just have the foresight to not do that. You should just be like, Let's just pound this in here with Roshan. And by a miracle, it doesn't even hurt them. It's 12 to 7. The commanders don't really advance the ball, and they punt it again. And it ends up working out in the Bears' favor that the fumble happened because now they go down on another drive to the one. And now there's only 30 seconds left. And it's like, well, they would have scored with like four minutes left. And the commanders probably would have just went down and won the game. So it's like, wow, I can't believe this somehow went in their favor, especially after they've just they just did not earn this win. So they completely pull a win out of their ass. Super unlike the Bears. Usually something like this would happen to them. And you go, wow, I, I can't believe it. And you could argue like, oh, they should have bled the clock a little more. It's like, that's all hindsight. To score with 25 left and the commanders were the team to burn timeouts on dumb plays earlier. Now they only have one timeout, 25 seconds. It's like, there's just no way. And a Hail Mary is a Hail Mary. And it's like, it's never going to. You're always going to find a nitpick where like something should have went differently. And but this is beyond that because it's pure incompetence. We give them the play up to the 50 yard line right before with a few seconds left. We just let them do it. I don't see the point in letting anyone do anything um, unless it's that play with no time left and they're just going to start laddering, lateraling it, then sure, let everybody be in front of you, whatever. I guess I can get that. But to, to just give them 20 yards and make the Hail Mary realistic, I, I don't understand that. I mean, I know it's still super low percentage, but if you're going to let them do that and then you're going to be the head coach and you're not going to notice that your corner is, is like not in position and is chirping people and you're not going to call a timeout. Why not just call a timeout anyway? Just be like, let's just make sure we're going to defend this right. Here's where everybody needs to be. Um, it, it, it seems like the best head coaches in the NFL typically call defensive timeouts late in the game when they're at a defensive advantage in the game just to get everybody on the same page you know everybody's still rushing around the energy is high you're like oh shit i can't believe we pulled this off i mean tyreek stevenson obviously is an idiot for what he did and is aware of that um my read on the play is it doesn't matter what his assignment was he blew his assignment so even if it was on brown who ended up catching the touchdown like no matter what he blew it and the play had started and he turned around and was like, oh, fuck, I'm just going to have to sprint to the ball and like, you know, make myself not the idiot. Uh, and look, it just worked out perfectly for Washington. There's not really anything you could do when your guy's super out of position like that. I would feel slightly I would feel significantly better 
if the Doug Kramer play happened and the Bears just run out the clock, it would still obviously be what the fuck happened on offense. Um, But that would be it, which is better. It's better to just have what the fuck happened on offense than now the, your defense plays great all game and you can't get your guys in the right position for a Hail Mary. They just assume that they've won the game. It, it just hurts a lot. Like losing that way hurts a lot. And it's like, if if everybody had been super contested and a ball just bounced away and we couldn't, you know, like guys are swinging at it and everybody's in the right position, but it just like happens to go all the right way and somebody ends up with it, contested catch maybe even, all that type of thing, it's way easier to stomach and live with than just you embarrass yourselves right after embarrassing yourselves and then pulling through doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do the bears like i said are usually the team that loses that game the other way and they don't they don't drive down the field and score the touchdown to take the lead with 20 seconds left it never happens so to then just pull the rug out and i, I the pain i felt i mean truly like my, I think, you know, numb has been thrown around a lot by a lot of people, but I do think it does describe what happened truly more than anything else. Um, I, it just hurt. It felt like someone died in front of me. Like, I, I just don't really know how to explain it. It felt similar to how the double doink felt. But I was there, so that was worse. That was like the worst moment you could imagine at a sporting event. Um, this side of a mass shooting. That didn't land how I wanted it to, but I'm leaving it in. Uh, <laughs> I know that if I didn't even find it funny alone in the room, that it wasn't good. You know, which but there's plenty of times when it still wasn't good and I found it funny, fully aware of that. I know you're all thinking that right away. So, ha ha, the joke's still on me. I get it. But I got, I called it. Anyway, that one was, that didn't land. Didn't land that one. Anyway, <laughs> why is this happening? What did, what did we do collectively as people? as souls to be born into these bodies that manifest themselves into beings that enjoy the Chicago bears because I don't enjoy it. And that's the problem. Like love is toxic. Love is irrational. Love is pain. Pain is the Chicago bears. And the, like I said, the bright side is that Caleb wasn't the like was the negative again, but it's because the offense is a negative, because the coordinator is negative, because the coaches are negatives. The coaches are all negatives. Head coach, solid D coordinator, but clearly not enough. Still couldn't rally his guys on the last play. But the defense was great all game. The fact that they were in it was even a miracle. They should not have even been in the position to be able to win the game. Which, again, makes it more devastating, but, like, technically, they should have just lost, and that's why I would have felt better had they just lost because they, they did lose that game either way. Um, it would have... I literally was like, holy shit, 5-2 and two will take it. I can't believe it. Six seconds left. Like, they're not, you know... Hail Marys just don't happen. Why would it happen to us? Usually, you know, even if the attempt gets off... Um, I didn't like the rush plan there. I'm not upset about no holding penalty because I mean, I am because like, sure, that would have helped a million had they called it. But why are we con why are we rushing for but doing it conservatively? Like, wh why do we have a there, there was like a QB spy on the play. Why do we need a spy like there? He's not going to run. And if he runs, why would we not be able to tackle him? He's going to run 50 yards with the entire secondary downfield. Like, I just don't get it. Um, yeah, it just, it, 
it's unacceptable. And th- they're just going to come out and blame player execution. And, uh, you know, Tyreek Stevenson shouldn't get a fucking pass or anything. It's obviously, you know, he should get fucking reamed too. Um, but he also prevented a touchdown in the secondary at the same time. He gave up one, you know, which isn't great. But had he given up the first one, there wouldn't have needed to be a Hail Mary. So, like, you know what I mean? It's not – It's your, your coach's job is to put you in the position for success. And if you can't control your guys – I mean, penalties were such a problem all day. False starts. I mean, personal foul on Tyreek Stevenson. It, and not having Brisker and Gordon clearly ends up being the, the deal breaker at the end. But the fact that the secondary played the way that it did without those guys is encouraging. And he's, you know, he's a great D coordinator, a terrible head coach. Uh, Shane Waldron is back to instantly being a terrible offensive coordinator. It's just like, what did they do? There was a bye week. And what did they do? They just didn't. They just didn't do anything. You know? Like that that was it. That was the plan for the whole thing. We we had a full week to prepare knowing what Washington has been and we come in and do fucking nothing like it's it's a shame on both on both coaches there that your team could not be ready and that the offense could regress so poorly to where now the run game is working which didn't work and held back the passing game but the passing game doesn't work and you know we're, we're still trying to fucking throw screens to dj Moore that everybody snuffs out every time they, they're just not good and the one screen we could have succeeded with to keenan earlier in the game like williams just couldn't do it for whatever reason that was bizarre and i I don't know i mean it it, it's just not encouraging that the pass game could regress like that um they need to make a move trade an o-lineman trade for an o-lineman i mean rumors are about we're about like them Oh, they're just going to dump off Nate Davis and like nobody's going to fucking trade for these guys. If you're getting benched on the Chicago Bears right now, like why would anybody want to give up capital to get you? Uh, It's just not going to happen that way, especially after such a demoralizing loss like that. Um, I don't care. Give up capital. It doesn't matter. You know, we, we can worry about getting the other edge rusher later. I want first round linemen, two second round linemen, and I want them to trade for another lineman and sign another free agent lineman. Let's have seven starters worth of linemen on the team and let's figure this fucking shit out with a new coach. And the only acceptable options if they're defensive coaches would be Mike Vrabel and that's it. No more defensive coaches. Brian Flores I would take also actually. I take that back. Otherwise, Ben Johnson needs to be the head coach of the Bears, and I have all the faith in the world in Caleb that he can just learn another system. It's not ideal, uh, but that's what these coaches are forcing us into. I There's no reason to keep Matt Eberflus as the head coach of the Bears. They can't win. They're incapable of winning. That was a loser's coaching game. That head coach is a loser. That's what that was. That team managed to pull out a gutsy ass win when they played like shit, like a, like what a good football team should do. That could have been five and two. And when you're, when your players are winners and your coach is a loser, you lose. And Ryan Poles turned this roster around from a piece of shit into something. And they're, and Eberflus wants to coach them like they're a piece of shit. And we just can't. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. I should not. No. <laughs> the amount of sadness that everybody felt in experiencing that is just unreal. And we can't. We just can't stand for it.
as a group. And uh, look, I was going to come on here today and I was going to talk about Saturday night. I did get to see that in theaters. I Honestly, I, my mood is just so soiled that there's no point. There's no joy right now. Um, so I'll hopefully touch on that next week. Um, Honora, I have tickets booked with my wonderful Regal Unlimited membership. So that will be on next week for sure. And uh, we'll see if anything comes up in between. I'm just going to wrap up here, honestly, with the week eight picks. And uh, this will just be one Sports Corner Therapy Session episode edition. When when that kind of when that kind of bomb just gets dropped on you though, like what is really expected of me? You know? So anyway, here is how we did this week. I picked the Bears. That's O and one. Said enough about that already. Said enough about that already. Just wow. Just wow. Uh, 49ers Cowboys. Pick the Cowboys. 0-2. Oh 0-2. And two. Oh and two. This is probably going to be the first week I go under 500. Because, yeah, it just keeps looking worse. It just keeps looking worse, you guys. Because I picked the Buccaneers. Over the Atlanta Falcons. And that did not work out. Now obviously I think if either. Chris Godwin. Or Mike Evans play in this game. Then they're golden. But neither play. And whatever. Another loss. And let's make that 0-4. Because I picked the Vikings over the Rams. And the Rams, everybody came back and got healthy. Again, these were picked in the preseason. So I didn't fucking know any that any of these things were going to happen. Uh, but 0-4. 0-4. Let's keep it going. I'm just going off the list I got in front of me. I know that it's not in any real order. Uh, I picked the Giants over the Steelers. That game is in progress right now. But I just doubt that that's going to happen. So let's just call it 0-5. But we're still 0-4 here. Uh, Eagles Bengals guess who picked the Bengals that's 0 and 5 yikes what a tough start uh, the Bengals might actually suck seems like so much for the slow start they might just not be good uh, seems like that could be a candidate for a blow up this offseason next up Oh, here we go. One in five. Pick the Broncos over the Panthers. Finally got an easy one. Uh, and then we'll go right to one and six as I pick the Saints over the Chargers. Chargers, no fun to watch, but they keep winning games. So, yikes. One and six goes to two and six. Bills over Seahawks. Easy one. The Bills are awesome. And no one's talking about them because all the eyes are on the Ravens. Kind of a good thing for Josh Allen that nobody's paying attention. Um, Seahawks, I just don't believe in them, even though the West is wide open. Uh, I took the Titans over the Lions. Crazy wild mistake. Uh, that was the biggest blowout of the week by a million, and they barely had any offense because the Titans are just really bad on special teams. Uh, week one for the Bears taught us that, of course. Yikes, is that two and seven? Five, six, yeah, two and seven. Tough. Uh, all right, two and seven, make that three and seven. Cardinals over the Dolphins. Uh, the Cardinals might be good, which is actually bad news for the Bears because we play them next week. And I don't feel nearly as confident about that as I did. It was like, oh, if we can pull out the commander's win or just like look okay, 
Again, honestly, even just if the Hail Mary just didn't happen and they lost is really all I would have needed to still be like, all right, like we got to pull it together. But out of a bye again, just like, how do you look that sad and sorry? Uh, So they might lose to the Cardinals. I don't really know anymore. They'll probably beat the Patriots, but it just doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, (laughs) Cardinals, Dolphins, the Cardinals, I don't know if they're any good either. The Dolphins definitely are not, and Tua definitely is not. So I don't know why they paid him and why everybody is still pretending that he's good. They are not a good team. Uh, if they were good, they would win, and they don't win. So that's pretty simple. Uh, Jaguars over the Packers. Why would I pick the Jaguars? The Jaguars are terrible. So that puts us to 3-8. and eight. Not good. Not good. So what do we got next? Another loss. Three and nine. As I took the Raiders in an upset over the Chiefs. And they almost kind of did it, but not really. Their offense is just so terrible. Uh, Did DeAndre Hopkins do anything in that game? I feel like the answer to that is no. Uh, But of course they added DeAndre Hopkins. And he's going to end up two catches, 29 yards. He's going to end up doing great for them. And they're probably going to end up picking up Valus Jones from the Bears, and he's going to end up like scoring a game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl or something. And like, I won't miss him because he's a fucking idiot and is terrible. But that would just be the perfect like nail on the head. The same way the Chiefs just made Giants fans look miserable with the Kadarius Tony thing, even though Kadarius Tony was like technically never really that good for the Chiefs either. But he just made like three big plays, and so it makes it seem like that they, they they dunked on everybody. But you know, they really didn't. Um. So anyway, that made us three and nine. We're now, yeah, this is just a total trash week. Everything's a loss. Everything else is a loss. Uh, <laughs> three and 12 this week as I picked the Jets over the Patriots. I picked the Ravens over the Browns, and I picked the Colts over the Texans. Um, Anthony Richardson is bad, been saying that. The Texans' offense is weird, been saying that. Uh, the Browns are better without Deshaun Watson. You know, nothing crazy happened here. And uh, Patriots over the Jets, I mean, just cements it. But I was saying, like, oh, you're going to make a bunch of trades and, like, blow your team up and fire coaches and do all this toxic stuff and, like, expect to, like, turn it around. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is a joke, so I'm glad he's losing. Um, But, yeah, tough week. Only three picks successful. And that was a, an anti-Panthers pick, Cardinals, Dolphins, and a Bills over the Seahawks. Like, I feel like those are pretty easy picks. Uh, my worst week by a billion. This kind of fucks up my season record because so many of them were barely above 500, but I haven't really been keeping track. Uh, whatever. So if somebody wants to do a season total, go do that and let me know. <laughs> um what a miserable week and hopefully we will be in a better mood next episode uh if something this something this bad can't happen again we would have to literally get hail mary on again um but that was a complete nightmare and uh yeah so i'm i'm going to do my best to uh <laughs> outside of an atrocity The spirits will be lighter again. The sun will come out tomorrow. Uh, But man, it's it's just going to be a long rest of the way there now. Uh, I will not let my hopes get up again the rest of the season. I mean, unless they like come out swinging and win a bunch more games or something out of nowhere. I don't know. I I don't know what it would take for anything to become positive again. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Please rate, review, and subscribe and share these episodes. We appreciate all the love and all the listens and all the numbers going up. Uh, That is a great feeling, and you love to see it. And let's keep it up thanks to cool people like you. (laughs) I am Adam Pecora, and this has been Requiem for a Tuesday. And remember, I are fat, you are fat, Doug Kramer.
We are fat. Calculator. <laughs> <laughs>